Well, welcome back to the Undeserved Flavor. <clears throat> How y'all doing? You know, the lighting is here. The lighting in here is terrible, and I, I'm not taking the time to set up. I just got the phone up on the thing. Here's what it is. Did I say it was testimony time? Well, let's start here. It's, uh, what time is it? It's got to be after midnight. Yeah. About 12.04 a.m. <clears throat> well, you know what? We're not quite at the testimony part of it yet. That's coming. But that ain't to say it ain't story time. And uh, I got a story for you today. I don't plan on making this a real long video, but if you've been around, you know what happens. So... <clears> the <throat> last video I put up was in February. It's now June 15th, 24th. Um, last video I put up was pretty wild. Uh, it was a pretty uh, out of the ordinary day. Just leave it at that. Um, life has been interesting, to say the least. Um, I don't know, maybe some of y'all, my followers, regulars that actually see when I post stuff, um, might have saw that little, uh, what do you call it, a community post? You know, it's like a Facebook post, but it's on YouTube. Talking about how, I don't remember what I said, it was something about how I'm trying, trying to get back on the channel, but life has been throwing curveballs at me. Um, check this out. I got out of jail yesterday. 50 days in jail. I did not expect to be spending a day in jail, much less 50. I didn't know that I did anything to warrant going to jail. Um, yeah. About that. <clears throat> so, long story short, I ain't gonna tell you the details of why I was in jail. I don't need to get into that. Number one, the case is ongoing. I'm bonded out. Um, don't worry, it was like, I guess you could call it a white collar crime. Um, I do private contract work and uh, I had, a, let's just say, I had a customer that had a little bit of a victim mentality and yeah, took it upon themselves to uh, sink my ship in epic fashion. And he must have known somebody that knows somebody uh, in, in this particular county that, you know, was able to pull some strings and it's just... If I actually... And I probably will because I'm going to end up, I'm going to have to unload this at some point. Like, I'm not going to be able to not talk about what all happened. I'm not, I can't do it all here because it'll take me all freaking night. But I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience with God in jail. Um, 
man, it's just freaking just, just, I've been living in the twilight zone. Like when I put that post up, I don't remember what that was a late February, March, somewhere in there. My life was just, uh, hurricane and tsunami and just wildfires of chaos and just it was like what freaking indian burial ground as my wife says potentially soon to be ex-wife i hate to say it and i will not accept that um i mean she can do what she needs to do she can do what she wants but personally you know metaphorically I'm not down for that. I don't support that. But if it is what it is, it is what it is. And I'm not... Save your life, you lose it. Lose your life, save it. So let it go to get back. But I told you all I was going through some things, but I didn't specify. When I say some things, a lot of things and big things. Granted... Hindsight being 2020, I could have avoided a few of these things. But at the end of the day, with what I was going through, and it's ain't an excuse or an, I mean, I can say it's an explanation, but it is, it is what it is. I've experienced the level of mental stress, anxiety, um, being overwhelmed with what's going on in life, with everything coming from from every day, from a different angle, constantly, 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 for like years, you know, since like two years pre-COVID, our life has just been barely treading water, you know, um, financially. I mean, it'd be a roller coaster, good and bad, but it'd be like, when it's good, it's decent. And when it's bad, it's like, are we going to be sleeping under a bridge next week? Um, and obviously, being married, it doesn't bode well for the relationship. There's a lot behind all of this. A lot. Like, a life story. I'm not going to get into it all. Um... It's late. I actually haven't slept in... I can't even math the hours right now. I didn't sleep last night. No, right now it's 12 something a.m. Like it's the middle of the night. Last night, I didn't sleep. I was up the entire night. I just didn't go to bed. Didn't, didn't sleep. The evening prior... Like that, so like right now it's it's Saturday night, Sunday morning, midnight. Technically, it is Sunday morning, twelve oh five or twelve whatever it is now, Sunday morning. Did not sleep Friday night. Got released from jail. Friday night. That was day fifty. Of a jail stay that. completely blindsided me now if you see the story from someone else's pers- from an outsider perspective maybe you could say you could have you should have could have should have would have saw it coming i don't know maybe i don't know but sh- sh- long story short like i said i do contract work and i had a victim or should i say a customer that decided to play the victim and pulled some strings and has literally sank my ship in epic fashion. And um, now there's a massive court situation happening. And due to the fact that this person took it upon themselves to do what they did, and I'm not, I'm not going to get into the details at all because it's this isn't me um, trying to not take responsibility for what I did or blame someone else or like whatever. I'm not getting into that. Like I'm, I'm just saying this event happened.
and I spent 50 days in jail. I couldn't get out because of how much of a mess this was. Man. So here, here's the thing. We're going to start here. I'd like to make a goal of doing a, a video a day from here on out, as long as I'm alive, uh, as long as I'm not behind bars. And I don't, well, we'll get into it. We're not going to get into all tonight, but you're going to have to hit that subscribe button. Drop me a like. Um, and this ain't no clickbait. This is not, I'm not making, I'm not dramatizing any of this. I'm literally like, I've just had the biggest shock of my entire life. Um, and like I previously mentioned now, married 16 years, that looks like it's probably going to change. Um, four kids like shit hit the fan with a freaking NOS engaged the turbo supercharger freaking jet engine shit hit the fan like bodies f going through freaking 747 turbines <laughs> nothing left of them like that's my life right now <clears throat> Well, here's the thing. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. And here in the undeserved flavor, we like to taste and see that the Lord is good. God is good. All the time and all the time, God is good. Um, I'm always looking for the bright side of things because, um, like I said, fault or no fault, I'm still trying to figure this all out. Um, trying to figure out what mistakes I could have not made or whatever. But that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is the experience. I'm going to nutshell it because I don't want this to turn into a freaking eight hour video. Um, and I set, and, and like I said, I'm going to have a goal of putting a video up daily from here on out as long as I have the ability to. Um, because I'm, I'm going in a different direction. Um, 50 days in jail unexpectedly when you're literally ripped out of your life at the worst possible time, mind you. Um, business was rough. I had just made a transition out of being self-employed to having found a job that was um, going to start paying me. And we were in transition. Money was not where we wanted it to be. You know, and that's life for some people. You know, sometimes it's good, sometimes it sucks, sometimes it's really freaking hard, and sometimes it's amazing. Well, it's been really hard for us for a long time. And when I say hard, I mean like epic, you know? I mean, I count my blessings. Like, we're, I mean, look, I got a freaking $200 microphone, you know? And I'm filming this on a, I don't know even how much that phone cost. You know, you get monthly payments on it through your T Mobile or whatever. But it's, by the way, it's not the latest and greatest. It's two years old. So I ain't bragging. I, you know, we live in a decent neighborhood. We live in a decent house. I'm not complaining about how, you know, like, because things have been tight. Like, oh, what was me? You know, we got it rough because I know people in this world have it rough. I ain't, that's not where I'm going with it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, you know, we're a suburban family. That has been struggling hardcore, facing eviction, facing cars getting repoed, facing not put, being able to put gas in the car on a regular basis, facing not being able to put food on the table, having to go to food shelves and, you know, lights get shut off and credit cards are now being, um, payments are being, you know, basically just, we're not, we can't, we don't have the money to pay them, so they're going to collections. You know, one of those things. I've been through this before, you know, over a decade ago where I uh, had a, a season of learning, I'll put it to you that way, where, you know, um, made some investments, didn't go out or didn't work out right. Some of it did, most of it didn't, and ended up wrecking my credit, gambling with 
you know, investing properties. I had a, I had a retail store. Just didn't work out. And honestly, it didn't work out because, you know, that's when we started having kids. And then that was the curveball. We had to start focusing on the family and just, you know, as life would have it, whatever. So credit went to shit. Excuse my language. But we overcame that. A couple of years later, we, you know, took care of all of our debts, paid off the debts. And as a matter of fact, like big debts. And um, I became self-employed and started making decent money, like good money. And then um, we ended up having to move across the country for personal reasons. And uh, it's been difficult since we've been down here. It's been a roller coaster, I should say. So uh, that said, I just, in the past, I had been through it where life was hard. We, I mean, it was great. We invested, expecting good things, tried our hardest. Life threw a curveball at us. Everything went up in flames. Credit got destroyed. Lost everything. Came back. Took a little time. Restored my credit to perfect. Literally, I don't remember what, it, you know, seven something with literally not a blemish on my credit report. And then we move out of state and now everything is hard. We use credit as an emergency lifeline. You know, and we do everything we can to avoid using it at all possible and try to set ourselves up to recover as fast as possible. Um, but not everything is in, in your control. And um, sometimes you can't see everything that is in your control. And, uh, well, we are where we are. But I want to get into the jail experience just a little bit. <clears throat> And I want to talk about why I want to talk about it. And that is, ultimately, regardless of what's going on in life right now, this is God bringing me back to a place of intimacy that I have not experienced and a passion and a fire that I have not walked in or experienced in almost 20 years. I've never lost it completely, but getting married and having four kids and moving across the country and being self-employed, like that stuff will suck the relig the the religiosity that's not the right word. It will suck the passion out of you if you don't stay diligent and vigilant and you become religious. If you still, if you if you remain spiritual at all, and honestly, well, that's not even really a good way to put it because I never became religious. We never ceremonially or religiously went to church and just pretended to be Christians. It's you know, but the prayer life, the spiritual hunger, the the drive to seek God, and you know, seeing miracles and everything, it ebbed and flowed, and ultimately, it's been kind of like we've been logs out of the fire type of thing. And, you know, you got to focus on life, especially when finances are hard. You got to feed your family, you know? Anybody got time for that? So my priorities, basically, I think, have been a little out of whack. And I've, I'm stubborn. I won't lie. Um, and part of the reason why things are where they are is somebody was giving somebody advice that they weren't taking, but, you know, when times are tough, you're in survival mode and you, you got to do what you got to do. And I didn't do anything illegal. I'm just saying I worked so hard that I was not following where, like, I was chasing the provision instead of the provider. I was seeking to save my life and therefore I have all but lost it. And our father chastises and disciplines those whom he loves. And there's been a need for a writing of my path for a time. And I think, why would I say I think? That's what this is. I just spent 50 F-bombing days in a concrete box 
or I hadn't, I didn't see the sunlight and I was eating food that I wouldn't feed to my dog. <clears throat> no contact to the outside world other than the occasional phone call home to somebody who had no real interest in talking to me. But I had, I needed help to figure out what was going on. And then not only that, figure out how the heck I deal with the situation and get out of there. Um, I'm telling you, man, it was the weirdest experience because usually you'd think you know what you're getting arrested for. I kn and I knew the surface, like I knew the basics of it, but I didn't know the full details. And then they kept saying, well, there's pending charges and there's, you know, and the, uh, you can't bond out because you have pending charges. I'm like, what are the pending charges? Well, we don't know, you know, we have, there's just, we just see on your file there's pending charges. I'm sitting there like, and I'm in a county in the south where things are just done real slow. Oh, I tell you, you want to talk about your taste, your patience being tested? You want to talk about going through a mental hell? I'm not going to compare myself to anybody in the Bible because that ain't what I do. But I can empathize with a few people a little bit. 50 days ain't years. But like I said, when I when this all came about, I was not in a good position for this to come about. I was not in a place to be able to weather this storm. Like I said, money wasn't hasn't been good. I was um I had new employment, so money was about to be really good, but it was just the worst possible time because the job I took was a commission based position. And it was, you know, one of those jobs that, you know, you got to be grinding for three, four months before real money starts coming in, like real money. Well, I was grinding for about two months and the real money was starting to pile up on the back end, but there was still processing and stuff. You know, it was come, it was on its way. I could see it. I had contracts so line like in the first month i for working for this company i was you know i'm a sales guy account manager sales type thing I generated over two hundred thousand dollars in business for this company in a month being the new guy and i'm making 10 percent of it so you do the math it was a good job and it was gonna be able to get us back on our feet right quick fast and in a hurry after two three four months when the, it, it just takes time it's just the way this business works well, I was a month and a half, barely two months in, and all of a sudden I found out I have a warrant out for my arrest. I'm the fugitive of the week in this county, and, the, and I'm on the news. And I'm like, is this a joke? Like, I actually thought it was a joke. I'm like, am I, am I seeing straight? My wife screenshotted something that somebody of Facebook group of, of, of the city we live in texted her the screenshot of my face being fugitive of the week. And I tell you, you know, if you know how to use the Google box, you could probably find it. It's, it's freaking wild. The story that they, they made up about me and then, so now my reputation throughout the state is gone, done, after a decade of literally having a perfect um, perfect reputation with my customers. Um, the last two years has been a, a rough ride. Business has been slow. But um, I, I took care of my customers. I'm the one guy that... You don't have to worry about. But when things got outside of my control, I tried figuring out alternative methods of making sure I make good on my promises. And 
I'm like, I'm not filing bankruptcy. I'm not going to take the easy way out, even though bankruptcy is complicated as all get up. But um, what I'm saying is I'm not going to find a way to get out of the obligate, like take someone else's money and not pay them back or complete the service I agreed to complete. I'm going to either complete the service I agreed to complete or I'm going to pay them back. Anyway, too much patience, I'd say. Pat myself on the back. Too much patience. Too little, too late. Um, and like I said, I get a customer who was a month behind schedule. And I was stressed out. Not going to lie. Anxiety has been freaking otherworldly. So I haven't been Johnny on the spot and getting back to all my phone calls. And that doesn't help things. Marriages on the rocks because things aren't, you know, financially and just years of being treading water. Now, I don't know if y'all are uh, familiar with this channel, but I don't usually get this personal. So, you know, just letting you know, this channel is going to take another, take a turn. Um, I'll tell you what, in some ways it's going to be a lot more entertaining but in, in, in ways other than what it normally is. Um, so the entertainment value is going up. But you know what? I'm going to tell you something. What's better than that? The spiritual treasure and value of the content that I'm going to be bringing you is going way up. And it ain't my fault. I guess it depends on who you ask. But God is doing some things. Anyway. So, not to get into the story because it's hard to not it's hard to not just start talking about it because I've I've like it's all I've been thinking about obviously for the last freaking month and a half two months, you know. Um, if we're rounding up, anyway. So I get in there and I just am in a state of mental chaos. I know my family is out here. I'm in there. I can't provide. I can't protect. I wasn't barely able to provide while I was on the outside anyway, but at least we had a roof over our head, you know, and it was, I was able to scrape by. And I was actually, like I said, already set up to start cleaning up the mess, like in a, in a big way and quickly. So the irony, I don't know if that's the right word, but the suckiness of it all. Because obviously, once they found out, once my employer found out I was a wanted man, they had to cut ties with me, and I had to figure out what the heck I was wanted for, and um, I cooperated. You know what's funny? Check this out. So, it's really freaking late, and I haven't slept in. You do the math. How many hours? I it's it's twelve twelve something in the morning on Sunday morning. Saturday night, Sunday morning. I haven't slept since Thursday night. And they get up in jail. You get up at 4.30 in the morning. <clears throat> at least at this freaking hell hole. Um, like, where the hell are you going during the day? That you got to get up at 4.30 in the freaking morning. What is the rush? tell you I got some stories this is a county jail it's run like a maximum security prison it's literally talked about by the people that run it that we run this ship like a maximum security prison and we're known for it people die in this place for well, we're, we're not going to, yeah. <clears throat> you think my last video was wild? Stick around. Stick around. No, you know what? When I got out, I actually, I went back to the channel. I'm like, I don't really like my last video. I just, I don't know. I didn't include the guy I bumped into in the video out of respect for him. And he was kind of weird. I didn't. And it was like, I don't know. 
it is what it is. I, I almost deleted that video, but I'm like, no, I got to keep that up there. I don't know. We'll see. It It's up to the Lord. But, um, I mean, it's a good video. It's just not a, I don't know. Not normal for this channel. You know what I'm saying? So, but what is normal for this channel lately? Freaking A, man. Um, I guess that is what it is. <clears throat> so, I get into jail here, and uh, I'm going through the whirlwind of mental turmoil. Um, speaking, okay, so just a reminder, I haven't slept in the crazy amount of days and hours, not days, but, you know, a long time. So if you're looking at my eyes looking kind of funky, they're super dry and like bothering me, you know, you know, if you haven't slept in a long time and I'm not on anything, I actually like, and there's a reason why I didn't sleep last night. It wasn't just because I haven't, you know, whatever, we're not going to get into it all. I normally wouldn't freaking pull an all nighter, but it's been crazy. Um, came home today my kids had a swim meet at 6 a.m and by the time i got done with what i got done with last night it was 5 a.m so i'm like i am not freaking laying down because i'm not going to get back up in one hour so i stayed up made some coffee brought my kids to their swim meet found out my license was suspended that was fun don't know why i have i'm gonna have to find out on monday it says an unpaid traffic ticket i'm like it's been at least a couple of years since I have a traffic ticket. So it'll be interesting to find out what that's all about. Um, I know they have some stoplight cameras, but I haven't gotten anything in the mail in, a, like I said, a couple of years. I've, I've had one of those before, maybe two, but that was like, that was like three, four years ago. The other thing I had was five years ago, four or five years ago, I had a freaking expired registration you know your tabs went and got that taken care of. i mean like stupid stuff and i don't know i'll have to find out i mean my wife said something came in the mail i was in there saying my life my license was suspended i don't know if it's regarding the case but that wouldn't make sense it says due to an unpaid violation so i'm like maybe somebody i got two vehicles in my name Wife drives the other one. Maybe she got a ticket and stop like I don't know. But like it's just not it never ends. <clears throat> anyway, I go to jail. I'm arrested. Like this freaking crew of squads show up to arrest me because I got a warrant. I'm sitting at home. I didn't know what they were here for. I walk up to him, you know shake hand what's going on guys and they, they're like um are you so-and-so i'm like yeah what's up well you got a warrant for child support i'm like what uh you got the wrong guy um the only kids i have are in this house been married 16 years and we haven't ever been separated and it's there's no way I have you know you got the wrong guy like he's like well we got a warrant and it's for child support I'm like okay well do your thing you know first and foremost you're gonna have to show it to me because you don't and they're like well we don't have it I'm like wait well, we'll hold pause it for a second here you roll five deep by that I mean you got five deputy sheriff's squads here. Each one of them's got two officers or deputies. Don't call a sheriff's deputy an officer. You'll find out quick, fast, and in a hurry. They don't like it. And you don't even have the warrant in your hand. So I asked him, I'm like, so... You're just going uh, to... Wait, 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 hold on. How did you find out there was a warrant in the first place? If you don't even have it. What's... Who, like, did... Were you dispatched? What, like... 
I obviously don't have child support, so I'm here. I'm all ears, you know? Um, and he's like, well, we got an anonymous tip that you had a warrant and you're here. I'm like, hold on. Hold the phone. You're telling me. No, I was, I was very respectful. I was not. I'm like, you know, guys, come on. We're all adults here. You got an anonymous tip that I was, quote unquote, here. And there, there's a warrant out that I have violated child support, um, whatever, like when somebody's paying child support, whatever, like, how do you violate? You just don't pay your child support for a month or something. I don't know. Um, or maybe it's after a period of time, get, you get behind. Um, but I don't, I've never been ordered to pay child support. All my kids live under my roof and they always have. I'm like, so y'all roll in here five deep based on an anonymous tip. You don't have the warrant. Can we, can we get this over with, please? Go get your warrant. And he's like, we're we're looking it up. He's gonna have it. He's gonna figure this out. So they actually go and find out there is a warrant, but it's for something else. And I'm like, what is it for? And then they told me it was for something civil. But they wouldn't tell me what. I'm like, okay. So you show up five deep. Once again, you got 10, maybe more deputies here. We're showing up like you're, you know, about to freaking raid uh, a meth house or something. Or whatever y'all do when you're, you know, uh, what when you're about to put a, put together a freaking raid, you know. And, you okay, you got an anonymous tip. You don't even know what you're talking about. And it's over something civil. I don't. I mean, I know I have some some business dealings right now that are in court. But how do I have a warrant out for my arrest for something civil? I, to my knowledge, haven't missed any court dates. It could be. It, they didn't say it was a uh, um, due to a missing court date, and, and they would have said that. They said it was for something specific. It was a civil. Related to a civil case. I'm like, you're, re you're rest on a, resting me on a civil case. Okay. And they still didn't have the warrant, by the way. So they went from um, child support to a vague response about a civil case. So I'm sitting here like, okay, it's 8 o'clock, 8, 10, something like that. Friday night. It was Good Friday, by the way. No, 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 sorry. I'm mixing two stories here. I'm, I got I to gotta clarify, it was not Good Friday. This was um, Thursday night, three weeks after Good Friday. You're going to have to hang out. Some, the, so the day that I was made to, be, made to be fugitive of the week and ended up the face of this half of the state, um, that happened on Good Friday. And uh, like I said, you know, y'all can find it if you Google it. It's pretty freaking wild. Um, not going into that. So the so they're like, what? Okay, so all right, getting ahead of myself, getting behind myself, mixing this mixing the story up here. Anyway, they find out that there's, there's an actual warrant, and I'm like, all right, well. I trust you guys. Let's just get it over with. Can I book out or can I bond out or can I, what do I got to do to get out tonight? You know, um, they're like, yeah, there's, um, it looks like, you know, it's going to cost you like three grand to get out tonight. Something like that. I'm like, man, are you freaking serious? You know how much my, you know what, you know how much it's going to cost me to get out, but you don't know what I, what I, what the warrant is spe specific for. That doesn't sound right. This whole thing is like freaking twilight zone and it only gets worse. I guess it's because we're in, maybe we're in the South and they're just a little slow down here. I'm not from the South. I've been here six years. They're, they are disorganized and slow. 
and they're backwards. I'm not trying to say the cops were. It's not the. It's not the deputies that I'm. I'm upset at. It's the system. You know, um, I was being 100% cooperative and yakking it up and talking and you know acting like nothing was going on, trying to assuming that there's a mistake being made this whole time because they didn't have any real information and the stories they were feeding me were wildly outlandish but yet why are y'all here as deep as you are unless you're just not telling me why you're here but i'm sitting here i mean all you gotta do is turn me around cuff me throw me in your car and you you know mission accomplished you know Let's get it, you know, let's get the ball rolling here. I don't know, man. This is just the wildest, weirdest thing. And anyway, so I was, it was 8 o'clock. I was just closing up my truck, cleaning, uh, moving some tools around, getting ready to close the garage door outside with my 9-year-old and was about to walk in and be in for the night. And these guys roll up. And now in front of my nine-year-old, they're, we're talking. And then all of a sudden, you know, they're like, we're going to have to take you. So I'm like, can I go in the house and tell my wife? And she's in the middle of taking an exam, a final exam. For, you know, taking a college master's program. In the middle of a timed exam, a final. And I got to go in and tell her, um... Half of the county is here to take me on a warrant that they won't tell me. Like, first they made up some BS about child support. Then they're saying there's some civil case that they don't know anything about. So who's getting, like, and, and it all it all re- re- revolves around an anonymous tip. So I know there's a tip line for, like, convicts and stuff. Or, um, not convicts, but... um Wanted people, fugitives, that's, there's the word. Um, but I wasn't a fugitive uh, at the time, to my knowledge. This was not the time I was fugitive of the week. So the fugitive of the week thing happened on Good Friday. I went in, bonded out, I was out in two hours. That case was now um, being dealt with. This was three weeks later, everything's fine. So... This had nothing to do with that situation. I knew it didn't have anything to do with that situation because that situation was not, um, well, that situation was, was taken care of. I mean, it, it's not resolved, but it was, there was no reason for them to come back and like have, another, have a warrant for something. Like, in, like, if I were to actually give you the details of this, you would be like, you've got to be making this up. And I feel like I, I'm thinking like, do I get a civil rights attorney involved because of the way they handled this situation? I'm really thinking that, but I'd have to find someone pro bono because like I said, I ain't in that spot. But the way this situation was handled was really freakishly not in line with our constitutional rights as Americans. But I was, you know, just, compliant i didn't want to make a scene you know but just my nine-year-old got to see me put in handcuffs and slipped into the back of a squad and then didn't see me for 50 days as long as they've ever been apart from dad in their life my wife and kids we've never been apart from that long in all the years of our families being together Moving off of the details of the story, um, turns out that warrant was due to a civil case um, that I was aware of, that I was aware of was resolved, um, at least to the extent that there was no out, there was no like loose ends. Um, everything was taken care of that needed to be taken care of, but apparently I didn't cross a T or dot an I because somebody reopened something 
I'm still trying to figure it out, by the way. Um, I needed to file some paperwork so that they can... I need to file some... Um, just fact information for them. If you know anything about this kind of stuff, you'll know what I'm talking about. And just give it to the court. That That's one of the reasons I was able to get out, but it took 50 freaking days. <clears throat> like I said, this place would run like a maximum security. There are people in this jail. I'll tell you what. This this is part one. This is This video is part one. Of what's probably going to be a, a at minimum a ten part series. Um, this video it's an introduction. It's very vague, not to the point. I don't know what of it I want to share in what detail, what level of detail. But the but what I want to get at is. The experience that I had with God in this time, it, I mean, this channel is perfect for it. The amount of testimonies, the amount of things that happened, the amount of traumatic occurrences that took place, everything, like, I say a 10-part series, 10 one-hour videos won't cover this. Um, but I'm going to do my dangdest to, um, get a video out a day and I'm going to try and, um, keep my thoughts, um, 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 um uh, in, a, in the right sp space so that I can stay on a task and a topic for the video. I really don't need to stay on a task and a topic for the video. It's just going to take me a long time to really explain everything that went on in there and my experience with God and everything. And what's changed now in me spiritually. And on top of that, like, I'll tell you a little bit more of the details of the case. Obviously, I'm not going to get into the personal stuff. Um, but I think this whole, th well, I know this whole thing was is literally like God's bringing me kind of full circle back to the the passion that he called me to and that I walked in you know, 20 years ago, 18, 20 years ago. And, um, something big is coming, something awesome. Um, and it's not a life sentence, even though I'm facing like nine felonies. Yeah. <clears throat> Imagine that. Twilight Zone. Twilight freaking zone. Thank God I have, out of nowhere, an amazing attorney. And a couple of amazing family members that stepped up that I would never have expected anything from. That hooked me up with that attorney. And things are going to be good. God, I got no doubt in my mind things are going to work out not only just fine, but like amazing. And this whole thing is going to turn into this wildly awesome testimony. But right now I'm in the thick of it. Well, I guess I could say I might be, I, I, well, yeah, no, I'm in the freaking thick of it. If I told you where things are at right now. In the house I'm sitting in. Yeah, thick of it. Anyway, so let me get into, before this video gets to an hour, we're at 49 minutes, um, some of the things that uh, I have picked up, some habits I've picked up. One is getting up at 4.30 in the morning. I never would have done that on my own. I've always never liked waking up that early. But uh, going forward, you know, I like to live life on purpose. Um, started journaling, writing daily prayers, daily talks with God, daily, you know, if anything substantial happened. Um, 
<clears throat> it's a really good Bible. It's an ESV. Uh, got this at the jail. I read about 95% of the Bible in 50 days. The the 5% I didn't read, w literally, I mean, I'm just using percentages arbitrarily, but like, I didn't read the whole book of Chronicles. I didn't read Leviticus. And I didn't read all of the 12 prophets, the 12 later prophets. I read a couple of them. Everything else in the Bible I read completely. Probably more than once. I actually got through the New Testament probably twice. Um, and then not just twice, but like going back through, you know, bouncing around, looking at the, like almost every page of this book has um, like pen marks on it, you know. Like I said, the lighting in here sucks. But like, this is a jailhouse Bible, you know, basic. It's an ESV. Actually, I don't think I've ever read an ESV, English Standard Version. Um, I usually tend to stay away from the, the, the um, I call them like the fluff versions, like the NIV, because they're, they're like watered down, you know, like the, the whole intent was just because the, the King James Version was outdated so they just went in and you know made it a little bit more digestible to the modern english speaking person but the problem is it didn't get them any closer to the truth just anyway we're not getting into that being that i already know what i know and i've been studying the topic that i you know talk a lot about on this channel for the last what eight years um I can read a regular Bible of any translation and, and know what I'm, you know, I can, I can see through the mistranslations. No, pro you know, I have a lens through which I see what I believe to be the truth. You know, like for example, when you read the word hell, well, I know the Greek word in that place is, you know, Aeonian or I'm Aeonian. That's eternal. Um, Sheol, Hades, Gehenna, Tartarus. Like, I know the context and everything, you know, like, I've been through this. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? But, like, to sit there and read this and just be with God in silence, which it was not silent in there. I actually have hearing loss because of how loud it was in there. My ears are ringing as we speak. There's a really weird sound when I'm taking showers now, when the water's hitting my head. That, it's hard to explain. It was not a fun experience, but I, you know, tune out the insane loudness and get in with basically in silence, it's me and God. Silence meaning I'm not interacting with other people. Um, I'm interacting with God, but like, I didn't put all these markings on these pages in, in one read through. Like, this is a collection of markings that, you know, I've, I've probably revisited this, this page, what are we at, Romans? You know, same thing in Corinthians and Peter and, and Ephesians and Hebrews and Revelation and John, J J like, Matthew, everything. Like, I'll come back through and I'll be on a different topic. The Word of the Lord spoke something different that day. And he's leading me through new different things. And I'll like I'm underlining other things and like setting things apart. And like I, the reason I underline them is because like then when I go back to look at it, then it's like it's it's highlighted for me and I can rehash it a lot easier. And you know how people are with their study in the Bibles. They gotta highlight it and they gotta underline it and they gotta mark it up, you know. It's like you know. If you know the feeling, you know the feeling. But, you know, um, Anyway, I pretty much digested an entire Bible in 50 days. And like I said, I've been through it more than once. Not completely more than once, but anyway. Not bragging. I'm just saying, like, it was nice to get back into just a regular Bible 
you know, when I've been reading for, for months and years, actually, I've been reading a lot of other books, and I'll get back into the Bible once in a while, but I've been through it so many times over the years, it's like, you know, I'm not getting anything I don't know. I mean, I talk to God, and I can you know, get fresh revelation, but like, you know, I got other books and things, too, that, you know, bring fresh revelation, but aside from all that... Um, Every morning I would get up and I would purpose to talk to God first before every th- anything else in the day. And it was, you know, I like, I'm spiting the devil being in this situation. You know, saying, if I'm going to be in here, I'm going to make it count. And I'm, I'm going deep because I don't have time on the outside to, to go deep. Let's go deep. You know, so I got this handy dandy notepad sent to me from and somebody on the outside and... Uh, <sighs> Scriptures. I got. I had terrible handwriting because half the time I'm writing while I'm laying down on a freaking jail bed, you know, in an awkward position, writing awkwardly and whatever. So it's a mess, and it's not even freaking lined pages. But like, I got forty some odd verses that are like highly um, encouraging because I was going through it, and I'm, as I'm reading the Bible, you know, I'm like compiling things that are like keeping me alive mentally, you know, a prophetic start, you know, Exodus, I'm sorry, Genesis 41, 52, for God has made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. I have been freaking afflicted in this land. So this is a good first one because it's like a glimmer of hope. You know, there's going to be a testimony on the other side of this. Another one, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are incomparable to the glory that is to be revealed in us to us. And here's the here's this one was a big one for me in this situation because I, could, I had no access or no communication with really the outside world. Like I don't have a bunch of phone numbers, you know. I memorize who memorizes phone numbers anymore. I know my dad's phone number, my wife's phone number. That's it. And um, when I was at booking to come in here, I didn't know I was going to be stuck in jail for 50 freaking days. I thought I was going to be bonded out in a couple hours. At worst, I was going to be in here overnight. So I, um, when they were taking my personal items, they asked me, do you want to get any phone numbers out of your phone? I'm like, well, let me look at it. You know, so I'm like scrolling. I'm like, you know, okay, I know my dad's number. I know my, my, my wife's number. Let me grab my buddy's number um, just in case, you know, plan B or, uh, you know, last resort option or whatever. So I got a but one buddy's number. So I got three people's phone number. And then I wasn't uh, able to get out the next day because there's, there's a mess. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I got a haircut today. I cut my own hair in my bathroom with my clippers. My hair was long after 50 days with no haircut. No shaving. Actually, I've never had a beard that big in my life. It's kind of funny because I already had one a little bit beyond this when I went in. Crazy. But anyway, so I think I'm going to actually... So one of the things I thought about while I was in there is I'm going to publish a book for getting through impossible times whether you're grieving or you're you're going through a questionable season where you, there's unknown you know i mean you're sitting in jail you don't even know wh- who or what's coming against you and you have no way to find out because they don't give you the resources like they're sh- supposed to because we in the south and they treat County jails like freaking maximum security federal penitentiaries. There's guys in here w- w- like on a freaking traffic offense who's been in there for three months because he doesn't have anybody on the outside to be a squeaky wheel on his behalf. And he's um, Hispanic. So they're, you know, you can throw the race card out there too. He's sitting there just waiting. What f- for? The guy's probably got a $150 bond or, I mean, something stupid like that. But three months holding on, why? Why do you got to keep pushing it out? 
there had to been three dozen guys that I met in this time where they're in there for some stupid thing that's probably going to get dismissed, but they were in there for 60, 90 days. There's one guy, there was one guy in there. Prosecutor doesn't even have evidence of the BS case they have against him. He's been in there 15 months. He's got a paid attorney that's been trying to get this taken care of. Paid 20 something thousand dollars. Attorney hasn't been able to make progress in 15 months because prosecutor hasn't been willing to move on it yet. I'm like, bro, you need a civil rights attorney. I don't know law. I don't know much at all. This is not my, my strong. So, so you may laugh when I say that, but I'm just thinking logically. You've been locked up for 15 months. You don't know why you're in here. You haven't even received your discovery paperwork in 15 months. You've been to court three times, and every time you're there, they just say, we're not ready to, to pick this up yet and just put you back in the cell. You're not sentenced. You're just waiting. I'm not making this up. I mean... What what planet are we on? And and I said at least three dozen of these these cases where now you now we'll pause here for a second. I know some of y'all are thinking you're talking to guys that are you know they have the cliche you know I didn't do anything I shouldn't be in here. No, I I, I met those guys. I had fifty days to figure out who was who in the dorm of 80 guys that I was in. And there was a big turnover, you know, because people are flowing in, flowing out, flowing in, flowing out. But there were guys that were in there for a long time. You get to meet some of these guys, and you know who is genuine, authentic. You're, you're sleeping, you're bunkmates, you know. You become, a, I mean, in two months of being a bunkmate with somebody, you get to know a guy, you know. And they op people open up to each other, confide in each other. Because, like, especially some of these guys who, like, they have nobody on the outside to help them out. Or nobody on the outside that wants to talk to them and keep taking their collect calls because collect calls nowadays, 20-minute collect calls cost 10 freaking dollars. You know, so you, can, you can't, even if you got close family, they're not going to want to take your calls every day. It's expensive. So especially imagine being in there for 15 months. You just kind of resign yourself to the situation. That's what this guy was doing, man. He's like, I'm just just gonna wait. He got saved in jail. Um, when I say he got saved, he accepted Christianity. Um, guy's probably, if I had, I don't know, maybe 30 years old. Uh, I never did ask him how old he was. Late 20s, maybe. Um, I could be way off. I don't know. It could be early 20s. Could be early 30s, whatever, it doesn't matter. But um, he's been just sitting there. And again, this guy, black guy, um, when he came into jail, he had long, long dreads, like very, you know, almost like Rastafarian kind of look. And that's the way he kind of described himself. He didn't describe himself as Rastafarian. That's just kind of the image I got when you know, he described it. And he's a real, you know, peaceable kind of guy, you know. Um, but he had cut his hair off at one point when they were in there because it just gets out of control, you know. Um, and we're in the South. You know, racism's a real freaking thing down here. And the system is real broken down here. And I'm not going to get into the, that conversation, but um, how is that even possible? He's sitting there. So basically with his situation, he... Okay, I'm rabbit trail here. We're over an hour. I wanted to get into... Um, this is an intro video for what I intend to be um, a minimum of a 10-part series. This this could be like a 50-part series. It'll probably go on for a substantial amount of time. But minimum of 10 videos. And I'm going to try to do one a day. Every day going forward. I have this notepad just loaded front and back of pages with, you know, my uh, 
experience and some of the things that I was talking to the Lord about and he was talking to me about and um, I ended up being the speaker at this at the church that met daily which was really cool they literally had daily church it wasn't like an official church nobody came in from outside but like there was this group of guys that at any given time was between six and 18 guys every single day at 10 p.m we all gather around at this one corner of the dorm and have like an hour of church you know um, when i first got in there there was an actual well at least he called himself a preacher you know he was like legit southern baptist preacher you know not um not like it was a black dude so it was like a spirit-filled if you know what i mean southern baptist church um the the white folk and black folk do th- do church very differently down here and um any day of the week i'd rather be at if i'm gonna have to go to a southern baptist church i'd much rather go to black church at least there's a little bit of life in them things. You go to a white church, white Southern Baptist church, reformed theology, you got to be all freaking starched up, your clothes, you know, tie, and you, your clothes are so crusty, you can barely walk. My, <clears throat> and the old 99 year old, crusty old white preacher just shaking his finger at you about something about hell, something about the rapture, you know. Give me a black church with some good worship any day of the week. And some guy up there, when Jesus gonna come get you, brother? You know, any day of the week. I don't care. Love it. But that's kind of the, when I got in there, there was a guy that was a preacher a lot like that. Older black guy that was just, you know, he got he got to preaching. Um, I don't even know what he was in there for, but he, he was in there for a couple weeks and then he got transferred out. And then... All of us guys that were still in it, basically, kind of were like, none of us are preachers, but a handful of us have been studying the Bible for a, f- a fair amount of time and can very easily get up and share something. You know, um, y'all know I got a channel, but I'm the, the epitome of a less than a layman. Just some random guy that reads some stuff and has opinions. But, you know, I got no problem saying a word. But at the same time, I'm in a place where I don't want to cause any kind of... I don't want to ruffle any feathers. I got to sleep, you know, in the same room with these guys. I can't escape them if they get offended at what I say. So, being wise as a serpent, wise as a serpent harmless as a dove. But um, I end up getting opening up pretty good about where I stand and... There was some pros and some cons of that. And like I said, hit the notification bell. If you're still listening, th- drop it in the comments. Are you? Do you have the notification bell on for when I put a video up? Because it's been, what, four months since I put a video up? And I guarantee you, of the 700 and some odd people that are actually subscribed, there might be like four people that actually find this video in their suggested feed. If you're subscribed to the channel... You're not going to be notified when I put a new video up. Being subscribed is very, it's, it's actually kind of arbitrary. It doesn't really do anything for the algorithm. If you want to know when I got a new video up, you have to hit the notification bell so that you get a little ding. You know, YouTube will notify you when you get into the app or maybe if you have notifications turned on on your device to, you know, this channel uploaded a new video, you know, so hit the notification bell. Trust me, it's going to get good around here. Anyway, so I started working out in there despite not being able to uh, hold back tears on a daily basis. Like It was rough, but, you know, started working out, you know, tracking all my, <clears throat> everything I did. There was a couple other guys that did it too, so it made it kind of nice. You got a couple guys to kind of do it with, you know, side by side, you know, push-ups, running up and down stairs, pull-ups, you know, rows on the back of the stairs, you know, various different, you get creative, you know, you got, you don't get any weights or nothing like that, but you can do various things. But, um, my last day in there, I was doing sets of 50 push ups like they were nothing like sets, 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 sets. Like 
a deck of cards. You do one, you flip a card. You do a set, you flip a card. You do a set, you flip a card. And I didn't do a whole deck of cards worth of 50 sets. I haven't I hadn't gotten up there yet, but um, I could do a whole deck of cards of 30. I could do 52 sets of, 50, of 30 push-ups in under an hour and a half. After being in there for that long and, and doing the same thing every every other day, like you just build up tolerance, you know. And the, the stupid, idiot, like the stupid thing about it is, the junk food that they give you in there, you're not going to see any improvement physically. Now, if you're, I'm not saying you're not going to see any improvement. You're going to see some if you're working out. You know, you're not going to look malnourished and scrawny, scraggly. But um, the food that was in there, I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy. It was worse than worst, the worst dog food you can find. You can find. Anyway, um, but every morning I'd get up, talk to God, and He'd give me like just a a word and a topic, and then I'd get in the Bible and just bounce around Scripture. You know, various passages that were relevant to this. I'd write them down and meditate on that for the you know duration of the day or at least the first half of the day and then later on in the day you know and i you know y'all will know my flavor of stuff to talk about and remind myself about well in there you have no resources you got no google you got no all these extra books that you have at home no device to check you know oh, what verse was that let's just google it um for he said blah 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 Oh, that's this verse here. And it's... No, you got to know where it's at. I mean, if you want to find the verse, unless you have a concordance or something, and there are one or two guys in the dorm had a concordance, so, you know, we could look up certain... You know, if you know, if you kind of vaguely know a verse and you need to know where it is, you can kind of do a word search, whatever, and find the verse. But, like, old school, man, old school methods when you're shut out from the world um i got topics after topics after topics and you know it goes without saying you know i got a topic here with all kinds of scriptures and various paragraphs of opinion and talk um it, one of the first topics i had and there was um can you guess god is good and the father of all the gospel is good news. It's an announcement. It's a declaration, not an ultimatum, i.e. turn or burn or repent or perish. Contrary to what the Bible actually kind of says in its poor mistransliteration, um, all have been or are being saved and or will be saved. Good news. You know, and then I got to bunch of scriptures that all point to it you know romans 5 15 through 20 first corinthians 15 22 colossians 1 or colossians 1 19 and 20 romans 11 32 psalm 22 27 ephesians 1 9 through 10 romans 8 1 through 2 ephesians 1 23 romans 8 9 through 10 acts 2 17 galatians 1 15 through 16 romans 8 19 romans 8 17 Romans 8, 38 through 39. Romans 10, 15. I spent some time in Romans in this one, if you can't tell. Finally, Romans 12, 1 and 2. And John 12, 32. If I be lifted up, I will drag all men. And, you know, inside of that I have three, four, uh, like, paragraphs addressing kind of the overarching theme of these scriptures. And these scriptures I found organically just by literally reading the entire freaking book. The, I mean, by book, I mean like cover to cover minus the books I mentioned earlier. Um, and then rereading it and going back to where I, 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 I kind of remember seeing this or that. Like, it was keeping me alive. I mean, I'm not suicidal. I don't mean it like that. But like, you know what I mean? Metaphorically. It's keeping me alive, keep me going, keep me motivated to not just freaking sleep the entire thing away. And you can't sleep, you can only sleep so much. And you're absolutely in hell. At least I was going through what I was going through. You know, another topic. 
God is restorative, not retributive. And then boom, you got Isaiah 1, 25, 26. You know, Zechariah 13, 9. You know, like refined in fire. I was trying to come up, I was trying to find verses talking about how the, because like, so if I'm going to talk about some of these to people in the jail. Now, when I was putting these down, these aren't, these weren't, I wasn't trying to put sermons together to talk to other people. This is just me putting topics together for myself. Like God is leading me in thought and spirit to think on certain topics day by day. There'd be a topic to just go deep on, meditate on, search on, seek on, you know, and it just worked out that when it was my turn to quote unquote preach or speak at our little church sermon services in 50 days, I think I got up and spoke like five times. I wasn't little Mr. Take over the show. Um, and I did ruffle some feathers. So, um, but I didn't do it on purpose and I made sure everybody was civilized, shook hands. I went out of my way to make sure, you know, like, Hey, no hard feelings. And I really wanted you to know that I'm not trying to persuade you to believe anything you don't already believe. Like I'm to change anything you believe. This is between you and God. If you, if what I'm saying is rubbing you the wrong way, you need to make sure you stand firm on the foundation you're sit, you're sitting on. Take it to God, you know, because there, nobody talked me into this. Nobody convinced me of this. It came straight from the source. I thought I lost my mind when it happened, and it's taken years for me to get down on the foundation of sanity. But all that said, these topics, like there's prima facie evidence in the Bible for Calvinism, Armenianism, Universalism. We know that. You know, those we as in like people in... In, in my camp, you know, and if you're watching this and you were in the same camp, you know what I'm saying. Um, but for me to have them, like these verses, all in one place, in a, in a jail, in a place when you can't go on the Google machine and be like, give me all the verses that, that pertain to universalism, or give me all the verses that pertain to Calvinism, or give me all the verses that pertain to godly character, or, you know what I mean? And I'm like, so I'm like just organically finding all these verses from cover to cover of the Bible. And it's, it's just awesome. You know, God was guiding me through topics and it was sanity. And then, you know, I have my daily, you know, prayer log. You know, I've never journaled in my life. I could never maintain a habit of it. But I started, you know, my prayers would be virtually ceaseless all day long, you're talking to God constantly, so you kind of don't stop praying, which is another good thing, you know, going through this situation. You know, a, a habit that I've picked back up after years of, you know, kind of being a coal outside the fire. Um, but I've never really journaled, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to start nutshelling my prayer of the day and the word of the Lord I get from the Lord and a little bit of what's going on. So it's like, I have all of this archived, like my experiences, um, minus the first two weeks. I didn't write the first two weeks because I didn't have the notepad. Um, but once I got the notepad, I started writing every day. Um, there was only a couple times I missed the day, you know. Missed 5-9, missed 5-11, missed 5-13. Okay, so in the first week that I was writing... I basically went every other day, but then I started going every day, 16, 17, 18, and I started improving on the habit, you know, 19, 20, and then 20 in the morning, 20th in the evening, and then another PS, 521, 523, I'll skip today, 524, and then a long paragraph. Anyway, so like, I want to get into a lot of the stuff that I've written, on, you know, the some of the events that took place that were like dehumanizing and wild and some of the events that were divine and amazing. And like, I'm praying for guys in here to speak in tongues and actually see power. And like, I'm preaching on the, 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 the miracles and the gifts of the Holy spirit and the tangible presence of God that 
is like the whole point of this Christianity thing that we walk in. Um, the, my gosh, I'll tell you, this channel's going, going to, it's going to get interesting. Hit the notification bell so you know when I got a new video up. Because, God forbid, I end up having another four-month stint where I don't put a video up. And by the time four months, two months, a month, if I don't put a video up for over 30 days, the algorithm for this channel is shot. I'm starting over. I don't care if I got 100,000 subscribers. If I don't put a video up for, well, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but you know, 700 subscribers on this channel right now. And if I go over a month without putting a video up, I can tell like you'll get like 19 views on a video. And the average duration of the video view is 3% of the overall video. And you get like one or two people that watch it all the way through. But if I'm posting videos once a week or more, the view count is higher. And I'm not trying to shoot for more views. I mean, this has nothing to do with that. I'm just saying, like, if you want to see what I got to put out and, and I get in a situation where I'm not putting something out for a few months, YouTube is not going to just drop it in your news feed um, when I upload a new video. So hit the notification bell so that, you know, you're, you're getting it. You know, if you hit the, if you care, I mean, if you like what I'm doing and you hit the subscribe button thinking, oh, I'm going to see this guy's next video. You're not familiar with how YouTube works yet. I'm helping you out. Hit the notification bell so you can actually see. I don't like, I like the subscribers because it just, that's, that's like a, a morale thing, but it doesn't really do anything other than once you get a certain number of subscribers, you can start earning money, even though it's not it's not worth working for, you know, but it is one of the requirements. Um, but hit the notification bell if you want to see my videos and, you know, instead of forgetting about me for even months beyond me writing a, or putting up a new video. And then you, they're like, Oh man, this came out three months ago. I forgot all about this channel. Anyway, met a lot of guys in there who, uh, were really vibing with me to say the least, you know, and uh, a lot of good quality individuals, you know, that we want to get together, have some coffee, maybe even like work together in some capacity. A um, couple, three, four guys we were talking because of the injustice that ha is happening inside of these walls. Um, we want to form something that I'm not going to get into. I'll say, I'm going to save that for another video. Um, a lot of the stuff I got to be careful about talking about because of the nature of where things are right now don't want to go too far um and uh thwart my my plans so got my little calendar a little homemade calendar there look at all those days man across come on let's get get a good little i know it's not very light in here can you see it yeah uh don't mind the phone numbers that just were on the other side of this page. They don't work anymore. These are old um, acquaintances I got from somebody thinking maybe I can get in touch with these guys, but none of them worked. I'm like, how did none of these guys, even though it's been like four, six, ten years for some of these guys, how did none of them have the same number? I mean, I, I call somebody to get, I called my wife to try to get like five, six phone numbers from some old acquaintances. Nobody's got the same number anymore. I've had the same number for freaking 25 years. 23. First two years I had a cell phone, I had a different phone number. It was only off by one digit from what it is now. But when I switched from Sprint to T-Mobile, I've never gone back. Um, all that said, uh, like, don't freaking worry about the numbers you see on there. I mean, you're going to call somebody and they'll be like, oh, you got the wrong number. It's... Beware of doctrines of demons. That's a topic that I got 
um, the day before I was to be released. I didn't know I was going to be released, but I knew something was coming soon. And there was this one guy in there that, you know, took it upon himself to uh, make sure he followed up behind me and told everybody, there really is a lake of fire. There really is a hell. Don't believe what he's saying, you know, and like you'd get in these guys and, and like bring his fear and manipulation and, you know, like you got to prepare for the rapture, you know. And I'm like, and so I, I spent a day going over this topic. Um, beware of doctrines of demons. And it was like, Lord, if this is your will for me to preach this, because I don't want to be the one that's, I'm not speaking against anybody. I made it a point to to make this very vague and like I'm not writing this because of a certain individual. Um, but I want to tell people like there are divisions in here, just like there's divisions out in the world. And what I, what I want to see and what we were all talking about as men in there, we want to see unification of the Christians in there. We don't want to see freaking splits. Like, oh, he doesn't agree with him. He's a freaking Lutheran and he's a Baptist and you know, he's a non-denominational and, we got to have our separate little corners of Bible study and whatever. It's like, no. Don't you know who you are and who you're of? Remember when Paul was talking about, like, and he is of Apollos and he is of this and he's. God was saying, like, anyway, no, I'm not going to go in it because I literally have the topic all broken down here. Um, the faith of Abraham. This was a good one. I was reading uh, Romans for like the. 19th time um and i think in like romans 4 something just kind of a little something ignited circumcision was uh, a seal or a token of a reminder of the righteousness abraham had um by faith while still uncircumcised what faith? Um, the reason that this question came up, I'm like, what faith? What was the faith of Abraham? Because um, it, in, in Romans, it literally says that Abraham's purpose was to be the father of those who would walk in the footsteps of the faith of Abraham. The faith he had before he was circumcised. What the heck faith was that? The faith he had before he was circumcised. That wasn't the faith of when he brought Isaac up to the mountain because by then he was circumcised and so was Isaac. I'm sure that was the same faith, but what faith did he have before he was circumcised? And so anyway, I'm like, what was Abraham's faith? Or Abram's faith, more practically, you know, because that was what was counted to him as righteousness. There was no law. There was no Judaism. There was no Christianity. There was no New Testament. What faith? How did God present himself to him? How did God speak to him? What did he come, you know, when he met Melchizedek, we are, you know, for the most part, most people believe that this guy was an actual, like, real guy, a, a priest from some land um, of the Most High God. Who knows what God? Because there were lots of them. But, um, and Abraham gave him 10% of his, the spoils of a recent victory of war, I think, if I remember right. Um, anyway, but then there was the angels, you know, that came to talk about the baby. And then they left and went to go save Lot, or at least, try. you know, they pulled him out of Sodom and Gomorrah. But it also says God came to him in a vision. But most of the time it just says God spoke to him. So, so was it like a guy coming through the hill country and the wilderness and knocking on your TP door, you know, or your your rock door in front of your cave? Hey, make me some bread. I come from the Lord. Well, what do you mean you come from? Who's what is that? What word is that? What Lord of what? You mean you got a golden calf in your backpack? You got a you got a a little wooden statue of a um a god of fertility or something like what do you doubt you know so this invisible spirit of god that abraham had faith in i'm i'm just like i got curious i'm ranting too far on this one particular topic but like 
I went into it. I got, I went deep, you know, and then I had an opportunity to speak to these people. So it, it not only did I spend the day meditating on this topic and find all these scripture verses, I mean, it wasn't hard to find all these scripture verses. I mean, you got Genesis 12, 12 through 25 is the extent of Abraham's life. And then you got a few mentions of him, you know, in, in the New Testament. Um, there's other mentions of him too, but like t to get back to the the basics of the point of what I'm talking about, you got to actually read the story of Abraham. Um, that's gonna be good. You're all gonna like that one. Um, I mean, I like barbecue and sacred cows in this channel, and I haven't done that in a long time. That's gonna barbecue some sacred cows. Um, and then, you know, just one day I'm just like, I'm going to read the book of Proverbs today. Like, the whole thing. And I did it. And not only did I do that, I have a, I just opened up a blank sheet of paper. And, sorry the lighting is terrible in here. And, I mean, you're not going to see anything anyway. But, like, the point of this was just, I'm going to write down the Proverbs. I was thinking about titling this page, Proverbs That Hit. You know? And these, this is, it's very personalized for my situation and what I'm thinking, what I'm going to, I'm, I'm, things I'm going to want to dwell on when I get out that are going to keep me in a, in a good headspace. So this isn't really something I, I preached on or talked about when I was in there. It was just, this is something that I put, it's kind of like I was putting this together for my future self. So once I get out, I can like, like just example. Whoever listens to me will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread of disaster. Let not love, kindness, mercy, faithfulness leave you. Write them on your heart so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and men. I mean, like, just normal things, like godly character. Get out of here and just keep your mind on God and don't freaking lose sight like you did, you know, in the previous years. Previous years, I didn't totally lose sight. It's just, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? And I think that's also natural of going through the deconstruction process. Sometimes you go a little too far and you need to come back a little bit. And it's just part of growth, you know. Um, but, you know, I had a lot of these, you know, those who seek me diligently find me. I mean, you can imagine my headspace, you know. The land of the diligent makes rich. So I'm thinking about what I'm going to do when I get out. I'm going to freaking grind, you know. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life. I'm always had, I've always had a thing for the tongue. You, you reap what you sow, but also like you create, you co-create your own reality. If you're always anxious and depressed or bitter or whatever, or afraid or paranoid, or paranoid like you're co-creating the crappy life you're walking in. And the gospel is meant to free you from that. And your thoughts, your heart, and your tongue all play a role in what you're going to experience next. And the book of Proverbs is great for that, you know. In all toil there is profit, but mere talk tends only to poverty. So, like, I'm trying to put things together to kind of encourage myself to, to not just be sitting in my butt at any moment, you know, because I'll work 16 hour days. Why not? You know, I got a lot to make, I got a lot to make up for. Might as well. We live once, you know, you might as well use the time while it's, while it's available to you. I, I wouldn't be able to do that my whole life. But if I got to dig myself out of a hole, I'll go dig myself out of a hole. But, you know, sometimes when you're dealing with a lot Mentally, especially if life has freaking been everything you've worked for for the last decade and a half, and the people that you cherish are everything's broken, completely shattered, gone. If that's ultimately where this all ends up, I'm gonna need some of this, you know. So, gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul. And health to the body. The crucible is for silver, in the furnace for gold, 
and the Lord tests hearts. So here's another one that I could actually copy over on that other page about God is restorative, not retributive. And here are a bunch of references to like what fire is a metaphor for. You know, most Christians believe fire is a metaphor for utter destruction and annihilation. And it's really not. It's for, well, right here. In the furnace for gold. The Lord tests hearts. Meaning he... He sees where you're at and then fixes it. And sometimes that can be painful, but it's restorative, not retributive. It's for reconciliation and uni unification. Anyway, I'm not preaching. I'm just down track. Anyway, so, and then I, they had this Sunday service church that actually would come in and they would give out free Bibles if you would memorize um, one of like three or five different chapters of the Bible. Like you could memorize like Psalm 91, Psalm 51. Um, a chapter of Ephesians that I don't remember. But I ended up memorizing Psalm 91 because I like that psalm and I already have it kind of mostly memorized. Um, you know, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I shall say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. You know, so I can just rattle off that whole, you know, uh, psalm now. I mean, that whole, all of Psalm 91. Um, the point of that was I was trying to get a study Bible because these generic Bibles that we have, um, no, I'm not complaining. It's just, it'd be nice to have a study Bible. You got a little concordance in the back. You got some study notes to kind of, you know, it's a MacArthur study Bible, leather bound. So it's a nice Bible, but it's, reformed theology so i could it would have been more entertaining i mean there's a lot of maps and a lot of historical accurate historically accurate information in there it's not all just reformed theology but the theology that's in there is going to be biased you know what i'm saying but ultimately like i would have loved that tool i just never got it waited and waited i think like three weeks never got it almost four weeks because um it wasn't the church that would give them out. It was an individual. And every week, the church would send different members of their church or like different um, associate pastors or whatever. And they would rotate, you know. So each, so I'm like thinking, because the guy came in um, and rumor had it in the dorm, like, hey, if you go memorize a psalm, you can go in there and get a free, nice leather bound Bible. And, um, I'm like, okay, so even though it's a Southern Baptist church that virtually every sermon they preach is going to bore you to death and put you to sleep, but it's literally just showing you a chart of the timeline of how to prepare for the rapture and escape tribulation and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, <clears throat> just biting my tongue and letting God entertain me internally while I'm listening to this guy make a fool of himself. He drew his own map when he was in Sunday school and his teacher in Sunday school thought, Oh, that's really cool. So he saved that ever since he's an old guy now. And now he hands the copies of it out to people and tries to say like, this is the timeline of the events, you know, of the tribulation and the rapture and all this. It's like, mm, you spent your whole time, your whole life on this, um, nothing burger. That's not Christianity. Man, my eyes are like, talk about eyes being heavy. I'm still awake, but my eyes are freaking like, probably bloodshot and dry. But whatever, we'll get through this. Don't mind me. Anyway, moving on. Oh yeah, I put Psalm 91 in. I, I actually wrote it twice. I knew writing will help me memorize it. And even though I already kind of memorized, I had it mem somewhat memorized. I didn't have the whole thing memorized. Um, but... I wrote it twice, and then I wrote it, you know, in a way that it's kind of separated by like four to five verses and just said it over and over in my head. I had it memorized fully in like two days. And then basically I just made it a point every day after that to at least say it in my head or out loud all the way through once just to keep it fresh. Um, never did get the Bible, like I said, but hey, it's kind of cool to have that memorized. Especially with my kids. I can, you know, inspire them to 
do something cool or maybe incentivize them, you know, hey, I'll buy a really cool Bible. You know, let's check out this mirror study Bible, latest version. No, I won't get my kids the mirror study Bible. It's, I'll read it to them and explain it to them, but I'll get them like a, you know, ESV or New King James or something like that, you know. Like I had back in the day, like there's not a freaking line of scripture in that book that isn't underlined or highlighted. Actually, you want to see it? I think I've showed it to you on this channel before. Back in my... Back in my fiery glory days. Yeah, I told you I was on fire back in the day. Just, you know, just... This thing is all marked up and... There ain't a page in this book that doesn't have something on it. You know, three years of turn to burn, fire preaching, fire breathing, you know, the Lord is at hand, no limits, loyalty, shabadooba, shabadadabadidoo, speaking in tongues, get your mind off of earthly things, our citizenship is in heaven, eagerly wait for the Savior, Jesus Christ, ooh, reference to the rapture, you know, anyway, Got enough topic here. But what I'm saying is like, you know, you get a nice study Bible and it's just you know, kind of fun to have. <clears throat> but I don't need one on the outside because I have all these Bibles. Um, especially now that I like prefer the mirror Bible and the new study notes that Francois has with that. Anyway, baptism of the Holy Spirit and boldness. This was one that I really like got lit up about in, in there. Um, <clears throat> Hebrews 10 35 cast not away your confidence for it'll be richly rewarded Hebrews 4 16 boldly come before the throne Hebrew Ephesians 3 12 1 John 4 4 he who's in you is greater than he who's in the world Romans 8 31 if you if God before you who can be against you you know um these are just like confidence verses and then you know because the topic is the baptism of the Holy Spirit and boldness um, but then there's also you know like Acts 1 15 then Matthew 3.11, Acts 2.4, Acts 1.8, Acts 8.14 through 17, Matt 21, 21 to 22, um, Matthew 15.8 through 9, preaching needs power. Once baptized in the Spirit, the disciples walked boldly, openly, preaching the gospel and healing and facing healing and facing opposition. You know, so really cool topic. This was a message I actually spoke on. Um, and it really hit, hit pretty hard with a lot of the guys, you know, because I actually had an opportunity at the end to be like, hey, so anybody want me to pray for you? Like, it's not me, but anybody want, so I actually know what I said was, anybody want us to pray for you that you receive the Holy Spirit? And, you know, maybe get the gift of tongues or prophecy or healing or miracles or, you know, knowledge or wisdom, you know, of all the different gifts or whatever. And then, um, kind of like a PS or like a subtopic of that is the prayer of the Spirit baptized. So like once you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, like and you speak in tongues or whatever, and you're you're just on that other level now with God. When you're in your prayer closet, it's on another level, you know. So I got a topic all about that, and this is stuff I just literally got from experience. It's not even Bible. I mean, it's completely. Um, backed by the Bible. I got scripture verses backing every little point that I make, but I have points that are all based on my experience. You know, like when you're in your prayer closet, let the spirit flow out of you, i.e. pray in tongues. Only speak in human language when the words come to mind. Pray in the spirit and truth. Visions will come. You will see people in situations to pray for in your quote-unquote imagination, address them boldly in tongues, in word, speak to the mountain, quote-unquote, in your mind, make your desired and spirit-led declaration, out loud, in your head, doesn't matter, out loud, I think, actually, is better, because we're speaking what's in heaven into what's on earth, um, in your mind, make your desired spirit, 
led declaration to that which you envision. Don't simply beseech and make requests of the Lord. You're being, you're full of the fullness of the Godhead. You know, <clears throat> Luke six, Luke seventeen six. Speak life, blessings, declare and command as the son of king, the King of Kings, that which you will and are led. Matthew twenty one twenty one through twenty two. You know, anyway, like it's just a whole breakdown of that topic, the the prayer of the Spirit baptized and how it's on a whole nother level than just common prayer. You know, and then I got topics where I didn't actually put any kind of opinion on them. I just, you know, I was like, who is God? What's he like? And then I just have a list of scriptures. I don't need to talk. We can go into the word of God, find out what God was. It's not the word of God. And you know that I don't call it that. And that's some for another video. I uh, ruffled some feathers. We'll get into that. I got some stories to tell. But yeah, when you just take when you take a topic and you show up, people are expecting something. But if you're not a polished public speaker and you're not prepared to, you're sitting there in a freaking jail jumpsuit. So it's not like you got a whole lot of credibility, whether people know you're in, what you're in there for or not. But if all you're doing is like you say the topic of your message and then you don't open your mouth outside of simply reading verse after verse after verse, Luke. 627, Matthew 43 through 48, John 518, John 1419, John 1417, John 15, 13 through 14, Galatians 2, 2, I mean, like, you can literally tell a story and preach a sermon by just having a list of scripture verses that follow each other. You don't have to say a word out of your own opinion or out of your own head or out of your own spirit or anything like that. Just let the scriptures do the work. Then I had, um, I remembered the three propositions, the three inconsistent propositions of, um, where is it? The inescapable love of God. Thomas Talbot's three inconsistent propositions. One, it is God's will, purpose, and desire that none should perish. He loves all equally, as, you know, laid out in John 3.16. Two, God will accomplish his purpose and fulfill his his will and desire, as stated in Isaiah 46.10. Three, some people whom God loved or loves will remain separated from him for all eternity, Matthew 25.46. So you can't pick all three of those. Otherwise, you're clinically insane because when you're using logic, it's simple. It's like three plus three is six, not five. That's two plus two is four, not 87. Um... These are inconsistent. So God gets what he wants. God wants to save all. And or some people whom God wants to save and loves will remain separated from him for all eternity, whether that be annihilation or eternal condemnation. Um, you can't pick three of these. The universalist obviously picks one and two. God wills that all sa are saved and none perish. Number two, God will accomplish his purpose. If that's the case, you can't pick number three. Some people will never, or some people will always remain separated from God for eternity. Because then it, it doesn't, do you, you see what I'm saying here? Like, it doesn't take a rocket scientist. So anyway, I was able to sit down with a guy or two and be like, what do you think of this? You know, because it's a kind of an icebreaker to this um, train of thought that I'm in, you know, universalism, whatever. Um, because it, when you're talking to somebody who's been brought up in a hellfire preaching church, turn or burn, it's kind of hard to be like, yeah, I'm a Christian that doesn't believe in hell. You're what? You know, the wall goes up immediately. And it's like, you know, they don't want to talk to you. They're like, false preacher. You know, so you can't, you can't be stupid. Wise as serpents, harmless as doves. So you sit down and you make friends and then you, then you start just, hey, I got a question for you. I got three inconsistent propositions here. I'm trying to chew on these. 
I've been thinking through these blah blah blah. You know, tell me which 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 you, you can't like you can see that it's impossible for these all to be. Um. You can't pick them all. Oh, you can pick one and three. You can pick two and three. You can pick one and two, but you can't pick them all. Because if God wants none to perish, and God will accomplish what He wants, none will perish. He will be the Savior of the world, not some of the world. But if some people whom God loves or loved will remain separated from Him for eternity, then which quality of God do we defy? His love? His, his desire that none perish? Or His sovereignty? The, the idea that He gets what He wants because He's God. You get people thinking, you know? You don't have to present something in such a way that's like, you're wrong, oh, you know, because I don't want to argue with people. I'm, be I'm beyond that. You know, anyway. John 4, 7, 8. Let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not have love does not know God because God is love. You know, I mean, the the basic foundation for virtually any sermon you're going to preach revolving around Christian universalism is honestly like the character and nature of God, and that is love. So when you're around, you're around Reformed theology people, whether they're super old school or they're a little bit more loose, they hear love thrown around so much, they're going to start getting agitated and need to hear the word demon or hell or sin a couple more times to balance it out, you know? It's like... Anyway, there is no fear in love, but perfect fear casts out all... Perfect love casts out all fear. And that's what I say to some of these guys who just... You're not going to get through to them. I'm like, perfect love casts out fear. Okay? So you're motivated by love in all things. Do all things as unto the Lord. God is love. You're going to walk around in fear... Or are you going to walk around using fear as a tool to scare people toward the God of love? Is, is, is fear the currency of the universe? Do the means or do the ends justify the means? You know, you can preach turn or burn as long as it gets you where you need to go. You can preach, you can use manipulation and guilt tripping as long as it gets you where you need to go. You know what? That started with St. Augustine three to four hundred years after Jesus was crucified. St. Augustine was the first guy in history, as it's documented, to be able to use theology or doctrine to rationalize and justify the use of the sword to make converts. Christianity was a pacifist religion. It wasn't even a religion. It was a way of life. But they were pacifists. What's a pacifist? Um, those who live by the sword die by the sword. Put the frickin' sword down. We don't go to war. We don't kill. You be killed. You don't need to be here anymore. If 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 you're gonna if you're the age old you know sacrifice. You know this works in more flavors of Christianity than just this. Like if you're already a believer. And someone breaks into your house, and they're not a believer, and you have a gun, and they have a gun. Don't shoot. Let them shoot you, because you know where you're going. God may still need to give them a chance. B.S. Shoot this son of a bitch. He broke into your house. He's threatening you. He's threatening your family. Get it over with. But in the early church, sorry, a little off there, um, they were pacifists. Turn the other cheek. You know, my little example of breaking in your house is not a good example because it's not really a good parallel to the point. But um, like Christianity, no, Christ, no Christians, no real way following Christians should advocate for any kind of war between nations. God came to save the world, not to commit genocide. 
like the Old Testament. Jews did. Over and 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 over. We're almost at two hours. That's fine. I like hanging out with you. I got to stop preaching on... Like, I want to actually talk about each one of these in a separate video. I'll have a couple of, you know... But, so that's why I don't need to talk about them now. But, I, you know, it's late and I'm just... I got nowhere to be. Why did Jesus come? What was his purpose? Who was he? And just a list of scriptures. You know? And... Preaching is to be accompanied by power. List of scriptures. Brr. Opinion. Brr. List of scriptures. Power of the tongue. Speak that which you wish God would speak over and to your circumstances. What a concept. You know, brr. scriptures and opinion. I say opinion because that's my personal thoughts on that topic you take it with a grain of salt and do what you want with it godly character this is another one that I want to put together just for when I get out the clank you know just to meditate on regularly to kind of keep things in check and not lose the fire that I you know paid for by being off of screens and in no having no contact with the outside world for fifty days. Um Second Peter, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue, knowledge, and knowledge, self control. You know the verse. Um be diligent to confirm your calling and election. Practice these qualities, you'll never fall. First, first Corinthians, everybody knows this one, thirteen. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not love does not Envy or boast, it is not arrogant or rude, it does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable, blah, blah, blah. Corinthians 16, 1 Corinthians 16, let all you do be done in love. 2 Corinthians 1, blessed be the Lord God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our afflictions, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction. Galatians the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. So, I digress. Um, this is actually a long one. I have, this is probably about the, the longest quote-unquote sermon. I call it a sermon. It's not, I didn't prepare these as sermons, you know. I just, it was a day's worth of studying on a topic, or like reading the Bible and listing verses and speaking on the topic. Godly character, you know. So many different. I got a lot of them on that one. For those of that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. You know, be re be responsive, not react reactive. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. Again, more to it. The word repent. I got a whole freaking sermon on the word repent, because y'all know what I know what the word means, and most of the church does not. So I made sure I left there leaving people some knowledge. And I wrote a song. Don't need to get into that right this moment. And then I was doing some business strategizing. And I got a continuation of my prayer journal. And I'm going to get into some of my prayers. Like I, I want to share a lot of testimony because I document some of the things that happened in there that were like, going to blow your freaking mind. Like I said, hit that bell. Don't miss this. This is the entertainment value at the very least is going to be worth it. You know, and then just more encouraging verses. You know, so. <clears throat> God predestined good works for us to walk in. Well, he predestined this experience of mine so that I could talk about it on this channel maybe we'll see Lord willing I'll get more videos up but hit that button because that you know the uh, the button that tells you it's two in the morning now 
and I'm asleep. No, I'm talking about the notification bell. Got my little pen here. I'm going to hit the clicker. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Don't be a stranger. Check out some of my other videos. The last video I put up is... Uh, it's got some pretty good entertainment value. I'm like, the, the, the cover photo of the video is like me standing there like some weird facial expression. I didn't actually put a, a photo as over the thumbnail. I should probably do that. I look freaking stupid in the... <laughs> anyway. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I got so much coming for y'all. And it's it's new. It's fresh. It's a different direction for this channel. And like I said, at the very least, it's going to be entertaining. Peace out. Oh, yeah. Bonus. If you're still here, something you can look forward to. I'm going to start doing, like, actually praying on this channel. Like televangelist prayers you know i think you have a sore left knee the word of the lord says it's being healed right now no not like that well i mean i mean if i'm led i drop the accent but you know i want to get back into walking the walk you know and just getting out like i've been all in here on this channel it's all coming from here I'm going to get into some, you know, speaking in tongues, prophesying. You know, I'll give you little examples of prophesying and, you know, pray for some of y'all. And maybe people start throwing their testimonies in the comment section and blessing other people that show up to the channel and see that. Anyway, so, yeah, that said, bless y'all. Hope God shows up to you tonight or tomorrow, somewhere between here and then, and uh, does something new for you. Appreciate y'all. Peace.